It's been so long since I last filmed a sit down video. I'm genuinely like scared that nobody's gonna watch this. So I really hope you guys watch this and enjoy it because I have so many things to talk about. Greetings loved ones and welcome back to my channel and welcome to my little bowl chair. I'm here with my chicken Squishmallow. And honestly, I got him as like back support because this angle see i just start sliding when i go back like this and it's just not great it's not good posture for me or the baby so i think that i'm gonna put him behind me for the sake of this video and get up and show you guys a little bump date this is me seven months pregnant 28 weeks along baby so i'm officially in my third trimester and wanted to film a video doing a recap of my second trimester for you and then also answering your pregnancy questions because i have a lot of them i did a pregnancy q a briefly on my story over like the holidays but i haven't answered any of your questions on here so i wanted to do that as well so i asked for questions on instagram we'll get to those in a sec but for right now i'm gonna whip out my phone and go through my notes of my second trimester because i did a week by week recap as i did for my first trimester and for my first trimester recap i really think that those videos specifically are so necessary it's not like second trimester recaps aren't necessary but i think that a lot less people seek them out just because the first trimester can feel just incredibly isolating and lonely especially if you're keeping your pregnancy a secret until you're through that first trimester time and then you start telling more people and it becomes more exciting and you work your way into your second trimester and maybe you start feeling a little less sick and it's all just like woohoo so you're just spending less time at least in my experience <laughs> looking for people's experiences on youtube you know to relate to so that's why i also wanted to do half second trimester recap half pregnancy q a because i just feel like people seek out second trimester recaps a little bit less but still it's nice to know that you're not alone in some of the feelings that you're feeling so i'll put the weeks on the screen while i'm talking just so you guys can see you know how far along i was when i was feeling these things but week 14 i started having some lower back knee and i put in parentheses probably from sleep sweating <laughs> you can have a lot of skin problems during pregnancy but i was sweating so much in my sleep that i was like breaking out across my body and i used to have like upper back acne when i was in high school and so that's kind of what i was more used to but when it appeared on my lower back i was like what the hell <laughs> I started having some lower back and hip pains around this time as well, especially after bending down a lot. Like if I was cleaning or doing laundry, you know, like bent over the vacuum or sitting on the floor or crouching over and like moving my piles of laundry around the house, I would just get so sore so fast. Kind of like that feeling where you have back pain from menstrual cramps, but it was like amplified. So I would have to use um, a heating pad on my back sometimes. Also in the early second trimester i started eating a lot more because i finally had an appetite again which was very healing for me because i had a very tumultuous first trimester in the way of getting sick a lot i was dealing with a lot of like depression and anxiety feelings as well not because i was pregnant like i was so excited to be having a baby but also at the same time just like you know there's a lot of things which we'll talk about in this video um where you get a little anxious you know and i just felt like the inability to keep food down was just kind of like the cherry on top that would just make me feel even worse because i was so depleted in energy and stuff so when i started having an actual appetite again in my second trimester like around week 14 ish i was shocked and being able to eat three meals a day oh my god it was just revolutionary for me so obviously i want to say every pregnancy is different when i'm talking about my symptoms i should have said this at the beginning <laughs> of this but i think it's kind of like implied and every body is different so maybe for you if you're going through first trimester sickness and you're hearing me say this and being like oh thank god by week 14 i'll feel better i don't know if that's going to be the case for you but that was just the case for me and it was sweet relief this next symptom i really want to share because this was something that no Nobody told me okay and it's a little TMI all right so I put I can't go commando anymore because my discharge has changed and if I wear leggings with no undies it looks and feels like I've peed <laughs> and then I also put leaking slash rushes 
causes me anxiety. So one thing that I feel like just generally people don't talk about in life is discharge. I think people feel a general sense of shame about it or just like that is something that you don't really share with people, like what your discharge, maybe your gynecologist would know, but not um, your friends and stuff. So nobody was like, hey, you're gonna have discharge changes to me, which I understand, you know, but I was not prepared for how much it changed. And obviously I used some descriptive words there that might be a little bit alarming, but to put it blankly, especially when I woke up in the morning and I like stood up from my bed, I would literally leak discharge. <laughs> and I was like, what the freak is up with this? And that would cause me anxiety because I would think that it would be bleeding. Like it felt like when you wake up and get your period or something like that. So anytime I had a feeling like that, I was like running to the internet to search <laughs> what was going on. And apparently it's incredibly normal. Like I told my OBG, and they're like, yeah, that happens. Yeah, just, I don't know, maybe wear a pad. I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> so just so you guys know, there can be a lot of changes down there. Week 15, I felt like I had been sneezing a lot and I woke up every day with a runny nose for like a month. And still I wake up with a stuffy nose often. I think it's because I'm pregnant in the winter time. And you know, I also sleep with like a wood stove on in the room. I have a humidifier now, which has been helping and like an air purifier as well. And so some of that has been helping, but you just get really stuffy and congested in pregnancy and a lot of people experience this, so apparently normal. And this is also the week that my migraines started happening and I'm not a stranger to migraines. I grew up having them and I would just deal with them, especially around my period. And especially if I had like tooth pain, they would get worse. When I got my wisdom teeth out, I thought that would cure it. And there's just never been like a cure, you know? They're one of those medical mysteries, unless you're like on medication or something like that, where it's just kind of like, this is just something I live with, honey. So migraines weren't something new to my pregnancy is basically what I'm trying to say. But I thought that I was having them because of my blood pressure, which could have been something like bad in pregnancy. And so I got a blood pressure monitor to kind of keep an eye on that. But if anything, my blood pressure was always reading low. So then I discovered that it was actually more linked to my blood sugar, like if I wouldn't eat for a long period of time. So that was like a helpful observation for me at the time. <laughs> and then on December 9th, I had a dream that we were having a baby girl. And on December 11th, was when we did our gender reveal and I found out that I was right. So that was really interesting because some people did ask me in like the Q&A portion that we'll get to in a second if I started having dreams about her and that's really the only dream that I've had. And then week 16 I started having some chest acne but also this is so weird. I had eczema before pregnancy on my arms a little bit. It wasn't like bright red and inflamed all of the time but I definitely had like some bumper lumpers you know and it went away way in pregnancy. Isn't that so strange? Like I developed more chest or back acne like randomly on occasion or like getting stuff on my neck or something like that. But then I never heard about skin conditions going away. So that was very strange and I still don't have it. So maybe she's gone forever, who knows? <laughs> and speaking of skin things, this is around the same time that I noticed stretch marks on my hips. And that's the only place that I have stretch marks right now. They're kind of like a deep, purple and I haven't had any of them on my belly or like really not a lot on my boobs or anything even though my boobs have grown at least to full cup size like I'm wearing nursing bras now because of how much my boobs grew during the second trimester specifically which isn't shocking to me I've always had large boobs but I didn't think that they would grow that much and then my milk hasn't even come in yet so it's like it's a little jarring you know <laughs> but yeah obviously during pregnancy your body changes and grows so much and your skin just stretches and adjusts and that's the only place that I have stretch marks. So I wanted to say that. I guess this was just the week of skin problems because I also wrote breaking out on the underside of my boobs. Like if I lifted my boobs up, I would be breaking out under there. It's either pimples or I just have some bumps. <laughs> Those all went away, but I do think that it was probably also because of my sleep sweating. I also just wrote that I was tooting a lot. And then on 12, 15, I wrote down that I got sick for some reason. I talked about this in Vlogmas on this day. I was in the bath, I drank a ton of water. And when I went to lie down in the bath, I was like, oh my God, why do I feel like I'm gonna be sick right now? And then as soon as I sat up, I was like, oh my God, I am going to be sick right now. And I had to leave the bathtub and get sick. But that was thankfully the last time that I had any type of nausea. So week 16 was my last episode. <laughs>
but week 17, my boobs started hurting so much again, which is a feeling that I had a lot in my early, early pregnancy, like week five, six, that was like one of my earliest symptoms. And it just feels like such a sharp feeling. And many of my mom friends have told me that this is almost similar to how it feels when your milk comes in. So it's almost as if I'm preparing myself for the sharp stinging pains of breastfeeding. <laughs> but yes, it's like random spurts of pain, kind of like a burning feeling or my nipple specifically will burn. And that's just been, um, you know, on occasion I'll get that feeling. Even yesterday I was getting that feeling. I also wrote that I started having back aches most days, but not many symptoms otherwise. And my headaches are finally going away. So that was really great for me. And this was like kind of around Christmas Christmas time so I was feeling a lot better and I was seeing a ton of family around this time and whenever they would ask me how I was feeling I would just be like no complaints here just live laugh loving in my second trimester and they were like yep that's the glory time the glory period I'm like I guess so so it started to feel a lot more um, just enjoyable and that's really what I've been telling my friends who are in their first trimester around this time and you if you are as well weeks 18 to 20 I just started to feel Feel more like a normal girl. I really wish I was a normal girl. Love you, SZA. Anyway, I guess that's something to look forward to, but again, every pregnancy is different. And that all being said, also during week 18, I wrote down that I was feeling very lethargic. I was eating a lot, like I had to eat every two hours or less, and I was burping so much. And the increased appetite around this time was kind of debilitating because I would have to have a snack no matter what. Like I was craving baked goods. I I would eat so many of them. If we went out on the town and drove by a country store, I would be like, pull over, honey, I need a blueberry muffin. I still do sleep with a jar of nuts next to my bed just in case I get hungry in the middle of the night, but I don't really eat them very often anymore, but I would eat them a lot during this time. It was just like a real change in my appetite. And since I said that I was feeling like so burpy and stuff, the way that I could describe it is just like being so gassy that you have a gas bubble just staying in your stomach and it feels like it won't pop. It won't give you relief. And the only relief that I could feel from that was when I would lay on my side. And I was dealing with this kind of around the new year. I remember being at a New Year's Eve party and I was farting so much. I just excused myself to another room to lay horizontal on the couch and just fart. Like that was literally what I was doing. I was like watching the New Year's Eve programming, you know, like the boring stuff that they show you, like the year recap of 2023 going into 2024. And anytime that somebody, cause all my friends are obviously like still drinking and stuff and we were at a party. So they're like playing pool and doing all that stuff. And anytime one of them would like come through the room, I'll be like, I really hope they can't smell me farting up a storm over here. And honestly, the gas has kind of stayed. Like I'm still pretty, 2D, so it's fine. You just blame it on the baby, you know? Nothing really you can't do other than that. Sorry if you can hear the saw, we're renovating our house. I also said that my nails have been super weak and breaking a lot for weeks now, which is rare for me. So around this time I started taking L-lysine again, which has really restored the vitality of my nails. But oh my God, I was like, my baby must be growing some lengthy fingernails in there because she is taking all mine. Like I would pull on a pair of pants in the morning and my nail would break every day. And I was just like, I don't even have nails to break anymore. I don't know how you're still chipping away at them. It was just so weird. They're like peeling. It was very strange. Week 19, I was having some constipation and gas and I wasn't really having much constipation issues. I know some people really have constipation problems in pregnancy, but that wasn't something that like stayed for me but you know just gaseous gaseous cloud energy and then on January 4th I wrote I think I felt her kick tiny flutters on the lower left side that almost felt like a heartbeat slash throb but a little bit stronger that's really how I would describe it it's almost like when you get a like a weird twitch in your eye or like in your arm or something if you're feeling a little dehydrated and you haven't drank enough water that day and you get that twitchy feeling it felt like that it was like a little oh flutter and I was like mm, that's weird I remember I was watching Broad City and I was laughing so much and I had been in a car accident actually which I talked about in like one of my first vlogs of the year but the airbag had detonated in the car crash but just into the side of my head because it was like a side swipe kind of a situation on the driver's side of the car and I was driving and so it didn't go into my actual bump but I did have obviously a lot of anxiety that like something had happened because also in that second trimester 
stage when you haven't felt your baby kick yet and you haven't seen your baby since weeks eight or nine of your last ultrasound. It's like you just have so much time to just stress and worry about things. <laughs> and so obviously there was kind of like a feeling in the back of my head that was like, is she okay? I was just kind of like asking for a sign, you know what I mean? And the next day she gave me a sign in the form of a kick and Finley felt it too. And we were both just like, oh my God, she's telling us she's okay. So that was really nice. <laughs> and then I started developing um, some hormonal changes that I noticed way more, almost like at the beginning of my pregnancy when I was really quick to cry, it kind of came back in that form, but also not just being quick to cry, but like quick rage to quick sorrow to joy, just over normal life events. I also wrote that I was breaking out more on my neck and my stretch marks started expanding throughout my hips. So they weren't just staying in one area, they were, they were increasing. And then, oh my God, this is one of the wildest symptoms that I had. So week 20, I started having an overwhelmingly high libido every day. Like I felt like a middle school boy. It was like, I couldn't stop thinking about boinking, honey, okay? I was just, it was the only thing on my mind. I wasn't really expecting this because some people have like a low libido in their second trimester or when you're pregnant, sometimes you just like don't have the feelings of wanting to be intimate like at all but during these weeks it was debilitating okay that's all I'll say I also instead of having burning nipples and boobs around this time I was having itchy nipples and boobs and it was just so annoying so I was moisturizing them a lot and during week 21 I wrote my libido faded but my energy stayed yay so I think that this is what people mean when they say like, oh, in your second trimester, you'll get your energy back because I, in my first trimester, could not do like anything. You know how I was saying earlier, I was like very sick, depressed, anxious, all of those feelings. And you also kind of deal with that isolation feeling that I was speaking on at the beginning of this video. So there's just a lot going on. And then on top of that, you just feel like you've been hit by a truck, so ill, and it can be really hard. And I'm not saying this is everybody's experience. Some people have like a glorious first trimester and they never experience this, but that was not the case for me, you know? So I was unable to do a lot of like the physical activities that I enjoyed so much and being active and social in my life was just something that I was not practicing at that time. So when I got my energy back, I was like, oh my God, I can like go for hikes with friends and go and take a Zumba class again and not feel like I'm gonna pass out or, you know, just that I didn't even wanna be there in the first place. Like I really wanted to go and I just, yeah, I felt normal. And then in week 22, I started breaking out random places like on my knee. I still have a scar from where I had a pimple on my knee. And then speaking of my knee, my knees and my feet started hurting a bit around this time. And my right foot, like ankle area started developing like a popping sound. But honestly, I think this is so much more to do with just wearing unsupportive shoes. Like I just walk around the house in my UGG slippers that have no arch support at all. And I need a little bit more orthopedic support in that area. So sometimes I'll just, especially if I'm cleaning or something, wear arch support shoes, like my sneakers or something, so that I'll have a little bit more there than just being flat footed. But during that time, because of those feelings, I got compression socks and they helped a lot too. I really like the compression socks for when I'm spending a lot of the day out like hiking or on the town or something, or if I'm in the car for long periods of time. I don't wear them that often, but I have Bombas and I really enjoy those. I don't know, maybe I'll make like a TikTok just sharing like the pregnancy items that I enjoy because there's not many. And then week 23, I wrote that I was having restless sleep and more headaches again and now have a breakout on my calf. Again, probably just from increased sweat. Week 24, I started feeling huge. This was around the time where I felt like my belly had really popped and it was not just like, oh, she's a little more round. It was like, no, she's definitely pregnant. You know, when you would see photos of me or even me out on the town. Despite feeling ginormous around week 24, I realized that I still had 16 weeks left at that time. So I was like, well, I can still get much, much bigger than this. <laughs> 
And also around this time, I started waking up at 6 a.m. most days feeling absolutely starving, even though I was eating the same amount every day. Like I'm normally a pretty routine eater with my foods, especially when it comes to my healthy foods. I'm just like, I have these things. This is my diet. This is my plan. So it felt a little weird that I was having these random hunger pangs, but I just started eating like a snack before bed so that I wouldn't have that problem happen to me. Week 25, I had headaches for three days straight debilitating, terrible. And the pain was like originating in the back of my neck on my left side. So I wrote, time to buy a new pillow. And I did because I was sleeping on my giant Malcolm the Mushroom Squishmallow at the time. Like I was using a Squishmallow as a pillow and I just felt like I wasn't getting the support that I needed. And so I ended up buying this pillow that my friend Ariel Bissett here on YouTube, she like stands this pillow. And she had reached out to me being like, hey, I'm watching Vlogmas and I like hear you talk about your migraines and neck pain. I am obsessed with this pillow. It's from Ikea. It's called like the Rosencarn pillow or something. She was like, I have so many of them. I've like gotten my mom one. You need to get one. And so I got one. And honestly, I've had it for probably like three weeks now and it's helped. I don't remember the last time I had a headache. So maybe it was some kind of a lack of support in the neck area where it was originating some of those feelings. And I also wrote that I was having more back aches, but mostly after days spent bending over, like moving boxes, nesting, unpacking, cleaning, all those types of things. And then week 26, I started feeling violently emotional. And this was like around the time of my last vlog when I kept talking about how I was like boring or I was just getting really upset with myself and having just more like behind the scenes mental episodes. <laughs> but to explain it a little bit better, I was just having mood swings and like a lot of feelings of insecurity, self doubt, and I just needed all of the reminders and to do all of the meditations that I could, like positive affirmations. So that was a little bit tumultuous, but then week 27, I had more mood swings, but it started coming in the form of like high highs and low lows. <laughs> and the only way I can describe it is like one joke will be so funny that I'll start crying laughing for an absurd period of time, like way longer than everybody else is laughing, like to the point where it's like, okay, you need to like stop laughing now. But then like before or after that, I'll just get really sad or like sob about something or like see something online that just makes me break down. I don't know. It was just such high highs and low lows. It was like unexplained sadness. And that's probably one of the things in pregnancy that I was definitely not anticipating. A lot of people ask you that, like what's something that nobody tells you? That would be one of them. Because while you know that you're gonna have hormonal changes in pregnancy, it's more like an inability to regulate your emotions. It felt like I was on hormonal birth control or something like that because did you know that pregnancy hormones are the equivalent of taking a hundred birth control pills a day that's how much of an impact your hormonal changes can have on you um so it was super similar to that just like a i feel fucking crazy you know that kind of a feeling and then on top of that i also started getting charlie horses they mainly happen in my left calf muscle and it's normally when i'm like tossing and turning in the night I'll have one of those feelings. Also, something that people are right about is the increase of gum sensitivity and just like dental problems in general in pregnancy. I have been like going to the dentist more and stuff like that, but not just that. I've also been increasing my dental hygiene routine, like not just saying that I floss every day, but actually flossing every day and like using a bacteria killing mouthwash and just like my fancy electric toothbrush and being like very obsessive about it. It. And even with my increase of dental hygiene practices, I still have bleeding gums in problems. So it's just, it's something going on there. Also, when I'm filming this, all of these things were happening to me in the past week. So it was like almost at the end of my second trimester, it was like getting a hammer down of a bunch of symptoms all at once. So I also wrote that my back pain was growing pretty crippling. I was crying a lot and ordered one of those belly support bands. I haven't gotten it yet, but I did purchase one of those. So maybe it'll end up on my pregnancy item list if I make a TikTok like that or something. I also need to talk about this because again, this is something that I did not know 
could happen. But you know how people get skin tags? So sometimes in pregnancy, you can develop new skin tags. They just pop up out of nowhere. Luckily, I have no new skin tags, knock on wood, but the one that I had existing on my body swelled last week to the point where it like hurt. And we looked it up and it's like apparently normal. I don't know, it was just so weird. So skin tags are an odd <laughs> symptom of pregnancy. It's like, why do these things happen? I don't know. But my last symptom is just my shortness of breath is getting worse, but otherwise I'm feeling okay. So that's all of my little things that are happening to me now with baby. I hope it wasn't too <laughs> long and overwhelming for you. So let's get into a little Q and A, shall we, honey? Let's start with the most asked question from Hannah, which is not asking you to share in case y'all wanna keep it special, but do you have a name picked out? And yes, we do have a name. I'm not going to be sharing it. I don't think anybody will be shocked <laughs> to hear that. I feel like most people who are having babies don't share their name ahead of time, especially if they're like an online person, but we're not even telling our friends and family the baby's name, it's like just for us. And also if I'm like giving you hints or something like that, which I'm not going to be, I feel like the name is so unique that nobody would even be able to guess it. So it's really like just for us. And we've had it on our list for years. We have a very long baby name list. And also another question that I got a lot was if I'm going to make one of those videos that's like baby names we love but won't be using. And while I do love those videos and love the idea of doing that, I'm kind of like, what if I share names on the list that we're not using for this baby, but we wanna use on another baby because we wanna have more than one child, you know? So it's like, do I wanna film that now? Or maybe I film it like after we're done having kids. <laughs> I just don't wanna share the name and then be like, wait, I actually wanna use that for my second kid or something like that, you know what I mean? Another very frequently asked question that I got was, are you nervous to give birth? <laughs> And I think that this question is just so funny because it's one of those things where it's like, um, yeah, <laughs> like you have a lot of feelings when it comes to giving birth. I think most people do, but also at the same time, there are so many risks when it comes to growing a child inside of your body and then birthing them. But there's only so many ways that it could go. You know, like either you have a medicated or an unmedicated vaginal birth or you have a cesarean. You know, it's not like you have all of these different options of ways to choose to give birth. So it's kind of like you pick a lane. I'm going the route of unmedicated vaginal birth. At least that's my hope and my birth plan. But many of my friends who have had babies have said, your birth plan is basically like a wish list. You know what I mean? Because you never really know what's gonna happen. So yeah, I'm nervous to give birth, but also at the same time, I feel like she's gotta come out one way or another. You know what I mean? Like there's no way <laughs> to get her out otherwise. So it's like, you just have to face that option. And so in the waiting period of nine months when you're waiting and growing your child, you then just get more into the research, more into, you know, envisioning what your birth is gonna look like. And what I would really say to this question is, instead of focusing on being nervous to give birth or focusing on like, I don't know if I can do it type of a vibe, you think of everybody before you ever in the history of time who have birthed children into the world. Everybody on this planet was birthed somehow, okay? So lots of people have done it. You just tap into that energy, focus on other things that will ground you and make you feel strong and wonderful and like you were built to birth. Because who will it help to be nervous? will help nobody. Okay, Brittany asked, what's your favorite thing about pregnancy? And I would say definitely my favorite thing, even though this may be kind of cliche, is just feeling her kick. She's so active. I feel her kick so often throughout the day, especially when I'm like lying down or being a little bit more, you know, reclined or reading or watching a show or something at night. She's just flipping and flopping around in there. And that's definitely my favorite thing. It just makes me feel so connected to her. And it's really special. This is another one of those questions where I feel like the person asking it almost put the answer in the question and the answer is duh. But Jamie asked, do you feel overwhelmed with the current state of the world and bringing a baby into it? Yeah, maybe just like my number one spiral that I was spiraling about for most of my first trimester, you know, with so much going on in the world and just like so many anxieties. Focusing solely on doom and gloom is just not my vibe 
during pregnancy, you know? Like, it's not good for you, it's not good for the baby to be in a constant state of anxiety or worrying about the world or if you're doing a good thing by bringing a baby into it. And at the end of the day, what I really just focus on is I'm gonna focus on me and mine, you know? Like, when we bring a baby into this world, it's gonna be us as parents and our baby teaching her the ways of the world and what we believe to be true and right and just. And that's really all you can do is just teach your child to be a good person. And obviously this is an incredibly loaded and serious question. You know, there's like a lot of things um, with the current state of the world that are wrong. But also there was things that were wrong in the current state of the world when I was born, you know? And I didn't spend my entire childhood trying to think about how I could fix the world. I learned to exist in it and cope with it and just try to be the best version of myself that I could be. Cause that's really all you can do as a human. You know, we're not gonna fix all of the world's problems in one night. And I don't expect my child to do that. So while yes, I would say that I am overwhelmed with the current state of the world, I don't think that my newborn needs to come into this world carrying all of that weight. Leah asked, do you plan to have family stay after the birth to help out for a bit? I'm so excited for you. I actually got a couple of questions just about postpartum and how I like plan to handle that. And my mom is gonna be staying up here in Vermont from weeks 38 of my pregnancy through 42. So if I go into labor early, early or late, she'll be up here. And I don't know, she's retired now. So like she could end up extending her trip if she really wanted to. She's kind of just fly by the seat of her pants. And the rest of my family is gonna kind of like play it by ear for when they wanna come and visit and meet the baby and stuff like that. Same with Finley's family. We're kind of in a we'll let you know vibe right now. But my mom is the one who's uh, planning to come up right now and like has already booked her stay and whatnot. Well, it wouldn't be a sit down video of mine if my camera didn't die, honey. Sorry about that. If the angle changed. I'm just talking so damn much. But this next question comes from Radistrahori. This person says, you look so beautiful. Thank you. Is the baby staying in a crib in your guys' bedroom when she arrives? So yes, we plan to room share with our baby, but not bed share. At least that's not our plan right now because we have various things so that we don't have to bed share. Like we just got our crib and our crib mattress off of our registry sent to our house. So we can set those up. But also over the holidays, my parents gave me a hand-me-down that I apparently slept in when I was a child and my mom slept him when she was a child and my grandpa slept in when he was a child <laughs> and it's just been in the family for so long but it's like this antique white bassinet that has wheels so you can kind of like wheel the baby around the room in the house and so we have that as well so we could do the bassinet vibe or we could do the crib vibe Honestly, you just have to see what your baby likes and wants to sleep in. And so we'll try a couple of different things out, but the bassinet is cute. So I might just use that to start, but then she'll grow out of it. So we would have to transition to the crib anyway, but the crib that we got, I'm very excited about because it's like a four in one convertible crib. So you can have it as like newborn crib and then like regular baby crib as they get larger and then like a toddler bed and then a child's bed. Like it just, it forms itself into so many new shapes that it's like, we're gonna use that bad boy for a while. So I'm very excited about the crib. This next person asked to be anonymous and they asked, how are you planning your boundaries with friends and family and a newborn? So I think I kind of mentioned this before when I said that just my mom is like booked her stay and is coming up and stuff, but we're really just going for the vibe of we'll let you know. Like I have no plans set with anybody of like, oh, in X through X date, you're gonna come and meet the baby. It's like, I don't know. And then as for other boundaries or like rules, some people asked about that, but I don't have any set rules in place right now. I think as first time parents, you obviously want to be like conscious of everything and take everything into consideration when it comes to like hygiene and etiquette and, you know, giving the mom time to heal and all that kind of stuff. So I'm really just going for a, we'll let you know vibe. And all of our family members have been just like, okay, you know, they're not pressing and pushing to make any specific plans. Nails JVM asked, do you plan to breastfeed? I love you. You're amazing. So are you. And I love you too. And yes, I do plan at this point to breastfeed. Um, I have like my pump that I ordered through my insurance company. I actually need my midwife to sign off on that form now that I'm thinking about it. Cause you get like a free breast pump with insurance once they approve it and it has to like go through, you have to do paperwork. So I need to print out that form and bring it to my appointment on Friday with my 
midwife. But yes, that's my current plan is to breastfeed and also store my milk and stuff like that so we can bottle feed with the breast milk and all that kind of stuff. Jasmine asked, are you planning on going on a baby moon? So this has been something that I've been thinking about recently now that I'm seven months along. So I'm going to be pregnant for all of March, all of April, all of May. And I'm really on the fence about a baby moon. I just don't know if I want to do that. I feel like if anything, we would probably just like go somewhere local. Whenever we travel, generally speaking, I wanna bring the dogs cause I love them and I'm obsessed with them. So maybe they could come with us. I don't know what we would do. It's also like springtime rainy vibes around here right now. I mean, it could snow again for all I know, knock on wood, but it's just been raining a lot recently. It is very gloomy out. So I'm not really like planning any kind of like a baby moon at the moment. I feel like because we're having a baby shower and traveling for that, I'm just kind of like, maybe we'll tack on something to the beginning of that or the end of that. We're going to a wedding as well after our baby shower. So I don't know, honey. FJ asked, are you going to be doing a baby bump photo shoot? I still recommend goddess. <laughs> I loved the end of this because I'm like, I don't know if this response got cut off or if this person was calling me a goddess. If they were, thank you. And also, yes, I'm going to be doing a pregnancy photo shoot with my friend, Emma. We're in the midst of planning it right now. As soon as I announced that I was having a baby, she messaged me and was like, hey, I wanna take your maternity photos. And I was like, okay, so that's all sorted. All right, Asteria asked the question of the hour that many people wanna know. And I answered this on my Instagram Instagram back in December. So I'll put the screenshot of my response on the screen while I'm talking about this. But they asked, how much of baby will be shared online? Will you be primarily a baby channel now or shown as part of life? So I feel like I'm just going to show her as part of my life. But also I don't anticipate her being the main character of my content. You know, when you have a baby, I know because I've seen it with many of my friends, they get very excited to share photos of their baby, you know? And so I feel like fine about photos, at least at this point, like my opinions on all of these things, privacy wise could change after we have the baby. Like maybe we have the child and then I'm like, take her off everything. I never want her to be shown on anything ever again. But right now how Finley and I both feel is like, okay about photos, but I'm definitely not gonna become a baby channel or a family vlogger of any sort. And I really don't plan at all on having her have a relationship with you, which I hope you'll respect <laughs> because while I have a relationship with you, we're gonna keep it just that, honey. I'm the main character here. We're just gonna focus on Mama Meg. I'll probably make more motherhood type content or share what you guys wanna see in the way of learning more about that or talking about my own personal self as a mom, but not really like bringing her on and being like, talk about yourself, let the people get to know you. It's like, okay, this is my job. This doesn't have to be her job as well. And for the rest of the stuff, I truly believe it'll all just like fall into place when we have her. Like my feelings, like I said, could change. Um, this is just how I feel now when it comes to privacy. But even in recent years, I've definitely taken more of an approach when it comes to privacy where it's like, okay, this is my channel. Like I pretty much just talk about me. And I try, even if I make new friends and stuff, not to like make them the forefront of my content or talk about them all the time. Like I'm a chronic oversharer already. And it's like, that's fine when it comes to sharing like about myself, but I'm not gonna overshare about like my child. And I feel like fortunately I've already put that into practice in my life right now. So I'm just like gonna, you know, incorporate that same kind of belief system for her. Oh, I'm so hungry. I need a little sip of my smoothie, honey. Oh my God, there's a bug in here. This is where it ends for me. <laughs> I literally wanna cry over that. I'm not even kidding, I'm like getting emotional. This is what I'm talking about with the hormone changes. Like me seeing that bug is gonna send me over the edge. Okay, and on the same topic of privacy and all of these things, Too Many Butter Knives asked, do you think we will see a birth vlog? Will you YouTube or Patreon it? So I plan right now to film my birth as it's kind of happening, just like with a tripod set up because I'm having a home birth here and you know
know, whatever we get, we get. And maybe I'll choose to share that footage or maybe I won't. Whatever happens with the birth or whatever happens afterwards, like my feelings about it may change. So right now I'm gonna say, yes, I'm filming it. No, I don't know where it's gonna go. I just feel like it's good to at least film it for the memories. And you know, as I'm like progressing through my labor and stuff, like I want to kind of record that just to have and to be able to go back and look at. But I think that recording stuff without the idea of where it's gonna go is something that I might become a little bit more into. Even if I don't share my actual birth footage and vlog, I will 100% do a birth story video. Cars Life asked, are you doing any birth classes slash breastfeeding classes before the baby comes? We're actually going to a baby class next week or a birth class. Yeah, so we'll learn about all of the things and it's gonna be really long. It's like a three hour long class. And then I'm pretty sure we have like a two hour follow up Zoom in like a week after the class or something. So we'll have all that info. I plan to take a ton of notes and yes, we're doing that. All right, two more questions and then I'll head the hell out. So Jamie asked, is any part of you stressed out about house renovations not being to your standards before baby? So I just wanna say, I know that you're not the only one who's worried about this, but I'm not. So we have like, what, three months before baby's here. And even though there's the saw noise happening in the background, like we don't plan to have that happening around her at all times. Like, it's not like she's gonna be born into an active construction zone covered in sawdust rolling around on the floor. Like, I don't know what people think when they envision, you know, my home birth here, but um, we're gonna have a very pleasant, fine setup for her in our bedroom with like, like, you know, her bassinet or her crib and changing table and all of her little clothes clean and put away and we'll do all of the little nesting things together. And like, you don't need to worry about that. You know, um, I'm not worried about that. <laughs> I know that everything is going to fall into place. And also I want to make clear to you guys, I feel like I've said this before, but like renovations are never going to be done on this house. I don't think we'll ever get to the point where we're like, everything is beautiful and I never have to lift a finger again. Like homeownership is all always fixing stuff. And if you go back to when we first bought this house and watch the house tour, the amount of projects that I said that I wanted to do, like those in the grand scheme and scope of us living here, those were like years and years long projects. You know, like when we moved into this house, at no point did I anticipate everything being done by like spring or something like that, or even summer, you know? I had no timeline for these things. So as for the bedroom, like like that will be done and ready for us and the baby to room share together. But we do still plan to like put in a second bathroom down here in the wing and like relocate things and knock down walls and all that kind of stuff. But like the baby will have a place to sleep that is secure and safe away from all of those things. And our plan for right now, at least is just to have her in our bedroom until we feel like she shouldn't be in our bedroom anymore. And then we'll transition her into her own room when the time comes when that room is built, honey, okay? But for right now, it's like babies don't actually need that much. People have babies born in tiny houses. People have babies born in vans. And I'm not saying that we're gonna, you know, do that or move into a van or something like that. But like, we live in a very large house. There are plenty of places to take the baby that are far, far away from any kind of construction or renovation, you know, worries or anxieties that one might have. And then the last question that I want to answer is from Olive and they asked, do you have anxieties about birthing at home and emergencies occurring? I really encourage anybody who's like worried about home birth or has anxieties about it to watch this documentary called The Business of Being Born. And in that they really show and share a lot of how, you know, home birthing midwives are just as trained as the midwives in your hospital. They have to almost go through, because they're being judged for doing it at home, they have to go through a whole added layer of like, you know, yes, we meet your anxieties with being even more ready. They come equipped with a whole kit for everything that could go wrong. And also the hospital is a quick drive away. So if I need to be transferred, then I'll be transferred. But it's not like I'm an hour away from a hospital or anything like that where I am, where I live. I actually am less rural here in Vermont than I was in Oregon or I was in Virginia. We're really, even though we're in like farm country, we're not really rural. Like I'm very close to town. And obviously when I interviewed my home birthing midwives, I asked them about their transfer rate or how often that happens or where they typically transfer to. 
and I already established care in the early weeks of my pregnancy at my hospital OBGYN. So if I needed to be transferred, I already have a file there and they would just transfer me there. And my friend works there and it would be fine. So I know like where I'll go just in case. And that's just all part of like the backup plan. But also, like I said earlier, you know, your birth plan or whatever is just like your wish list of what you hope will happen. But I mean, what I envision in my head is having a beautiful birth tub and a nice ambiance and my mom is gonna be here and then I have two home birthing midwives and then my husband and my dogs will hopefully be chill. But my home birthing midwives were also like, we're used to having dogs and kids and other things around and a camera filming, like they're fine with all of those things. So that's pretty much the vibe for right now. And yeah, I feel similarly to like that question that somebody asked earlier about like, if I'm nervous for birth, like I have a vision in my head for how it's going to go and I'm just focusing and seeing it as that. But also a lot of pregnancy and birth is just like being aware of, you know, risks or anxieties or worries when it comes to, you know, actually pushing out a child. And I'm also prepared for any of those. And so are my midwives because they're trained. They have been home birthing for longer than I've been alive. Okay. I am completely trusting of both of them and they have amazing reviews, are very reputable, and I'm not worried about any of that. Everything will be clean, tarped ready i'm gonna be in that tub getting after it pushing it out doing my you know stuff like that i read uh ina may's guide to childbirth i'll have a relaxed jaw what else will i have i'll be envisioning myself opening up that's what they say to do is to envision in your head yourself expanding for your baby or saying your mantra in your head of like i'm gonna get so big <laughs> They literally tell a story about a woman who said over and over in her head, I'm gonna get so big. And she like dilated like even larger than her baby's head was and just whoosh, her baby just slid right out. So, you know, I have my little tactics. <laughs> I'm getting that feeling right now of like, I'm laughing way harder than everybody else in the room. And it's literally just me and a camera. Like, this is what I mean by inability to regulate my emotions. Like my emotions will just go <laughs> all over the place. But anyway, this is all I wanna say. I feel like I was made to be a mother. I feel like I am built to birth. I feel ready. I feel able. I feel excited for the experience. And I'm not just like sitting here lying to you guys. Like I'm so excited to have a home birth and have that vision come to life. Like something that I've dreamed about for my whole life. And it makes me emotional to think about and talk about because you know, people, it's fine that people want to birth in hospitals or have medicated births or have cesareans or do whatever. That is their journey and that is their path, but I would like them to also honor my path that I'm going on and not be like worried or think it's bad or something that's like wrong or something that I should be like increasing my worries about because I trust myself and I trust that my body can do the thing. And I'm just excited about her birthday and also to be able to share that with you guys. And I think that's the note I'm gonna leave you on. I trust myself. I hope you trust yourself. Some people, they never wanna have kids and that's absolutely fine, but I wanna have my kid this way and that's okay. All right, I love you guys. Thank you for all of your questions and if you made it through this entire video, please give it a thumbs up, comment your favorite part down below, whatever I talked about, I don't know. <laughs> it was a long video, but I'm gonna head the hell out and make another smoothie now because my other one is buggy. All right, I love you guys. Stay smiling, bye y'all. <laughs>